Good morning, everyone. I, J. Vijay Chandra, welcomes you to Wix Connect. Today, I am going to discuss regarding cascading style sheets. As part of web design, we completed the HTML. After the HTML, the next topic is the CSS, popularly known as CSS, that is cascading style sheets. In HTML, we learn about the different tags for coding a web page. Web pages will be coded using some tags and based on the tags in Netscape Navigator or Internet Explorer, any browser, we can open those web pages. So, the coding is repetitive. The coding is became a repetitive to overcome that we use the cascading style sheets like the functions or procedures in C programming the same way in HTML tags we are going to use CSS where the multiple codes will be reduced to a single code. So to reduce the code of line in the HTML the concept which we are going to use is cascading style sheets. So here, cascading style sheet, the first one is the selector H1, the tag H1 we take in here, any tag we can take as a selector and we will give some properties to this particular tag and within that particular web page we can use this particular tag how many times we want with the properties, with the same properties. So here the properties we take it is here declaration session we take in two different properties one is color and another is font size that means wherever i use h1 tag the color should be declared with blue and the font size should be 12 px so this is the declaration section so in when you are writing a c program you might have remember the declaration section and opening and closing braces and all the things and when you are doing a VP plus plus or VC plus plus there will be property and the value for the property in the same way here also the property is color and here the property is proper uh, property is font size to instead of writing a code a tag for color a tag for font size we combinedly writing these two uh, declarations giving the two declarations in one particular for the one particular selector that is the H1. So the syntax of this particular cascading style sheets is selector H1. You can give any selectors. They are broadly classified in selectors are broadly classified into two. One is class selector, another is the ID selector. The selectors are broadly two types. One is the class selector, another is the ID selector. The ID selector will be given with a hashtag. If the selector is with hash, we can understand that is a ID selector. And without hash, whatever the selector is there means that is a class selector. So the selectors are broadly classified into two. One is the class selector, another is the ID selector. Now we are giving a selector which is known as H1. And the declaration, we are giving two declarations. And we can give multiple number of declarations. And this particular declaration, the property is the color. The color of this particular property is blue. And instead of color blue, we can give also give green, red, pink, whatsoever it is. And font size 12, we can give 14, 16, 20, whatsoever the font size we are required. So this is overall the cascading style sheets, the basic syntax. This is the basic syntax for the cascading style sheet where we will have a selector, then opening braces, declaration, declaration and closing braces. In declaration, the property is given, then colon, then value and semicolon. Cascading style sheets. 
In cascading style sheets, here we used only one selector that is H1. There is a chance of using group selectors also. That means we can use H1 and this will be separated with a comma and when you are using a group selector, every selector will be separated with a comma H1, H2, H3, H4. Okay, let's take only 4. H1, H2, H3, H4 and these 4 we are giving color, CO, LO or color, colon, green then closing. That means here the syntax is here the syntax is H1, H2, H3, H4 in the total web sheet if you are using H1 or H2 or H3 or H4 automatically the color will be of green and if you are using H5 or H6 it won't give it the color of green so this is called as the group selector here the selector is only one and here the selector is the group selector so cascading style sheets provides or facilitates us to even give a group selector. Next comes to the different types of selectors. They are broadly classified into cascading style sheets is broadly classified into two selectors. One is class selector, another is the ID selector. So these selectors are of two types. Cascading style sheet selectors are of two types. One is ID selector and another is the class selector one is the id selector and another is the class selector so the id selector will be given with a hash that means a selector with hash then we can say it as a id selector and for the class selector it will be of same type so let's take an example of a class selector p dot write opening braces text hyphen align colon write then closing this so this is about the class selector then another we can give in the same way p dot center opening braces text hyphen align center closing braces that means we can use the p for both the things with the class selector dot center means it will go for a center dot right means it will go for a right so this is about the class selector and whenever you find hash before that comes under the id selector so the selectors are broadly classified into two one is the id selector and another is the class selector and you can also can give a grouping for the selector a group of uh, group can be clubbed and the code can be css code can be give, given so css facilitates grouping option css has a selector and these selectors are broadly classified into id selector and the class selector then comes to the types of CSS. The different types of the different types of CSS or the different types of CSS or external style sheet or external external style sheet. Next is internal or embedded style sheet internal or embedded style sheet and the third one is first one is external style sheet next is internal or embedded style sheet and the third one is the inline style sheet inline style sheet so the style sheets are broadly classified into three. One is the external style sheet. Next is the internal or embedded style sheet. And third one is the inline style sheet. 
So the external style sheet for a total web page. If you want to our website or with, if you want to change the cascading things that means font, line, or color, or whatsoever background or foreground or whatsoever, some group of code, separate code should be affected to a particular page means we can use an external style sheet. That means a small code can be given externally. That means outside. And we can save that as CSS. I am taking an example one dot CSS. I will write the code in one dot CSS and I will save it. And I will use a tag known as the link. By using the tag link, we can call this one dot CSS to this particular web page. So, how to call this link? To call this particular tag link, we will use a we will keep this link in the head section. Where we will keep? We will keep it in the head section. So, head link or el equal to style sheet or el equal to style sheet type equal to text slash css h or ef equal to one dot css Okay, this is the code which we are going, going to use in the link. So this particular one dot CSS will be linked to this particular web page. So which reduces the effect, which reduces the uh, line of code, so that every place uh, where you want to do changes in the web page, no need to go to that particular place and give the tags. You will write it. 1.css or one name for the particular code and that can be called that can be affected total web page. So that is about the external style sheet. Then comes the internal style sheet or embedded style sheet. That means within a web page if you want to give changes you can write in a particular place and from there you can monitor total web page. At the starting you can write the code and that can be internal and embedded style sheet. Next comes the inline style sheet. Inline style sheet means for every line of the code you want to do some changes you can write before that particular line the style sheet code, CSS code that will affect the web page. So overall description the web page, uh, the cascading style sheets are broadly classified into three. One is external style sheet, another is internal or embedded style sheet and other is the inline style sheet and then comes to the what is the syntax of cascading style sheet cascading style sheet syntax is h1 that is the selector opening braces and closing braces in between you are going to give the declaration the declaration has two parts one is the property and another is the value property and value will be separated by a colon and ended with a semicolon once we call, give a semicolon this whole declaration is completed you can give number of declarations for a, a but one particular selectors. These selectors can be even grouped H1, H2, H3, H4 and you can give a some CSS code in it and wherever you use H1, this CSS code will be affected there in the web page. And then comes to the types of selectors. One is ID selector where you are going to give hash between that, then that selector is called as the ID selector, then is the class selector. Class selector, the HTML code only dot, you can give some description and based on it, you can use it. That means for pair of P, there are two types of, uh, two alignments we can give. One is the center and right, even we can give the left. So you can declare like that for a particular class, then that is called as the class selector. And ID selector, you can give the selector with a hash, then it is called as a ID selector. Then comes to the different, among different types of the style sheets, the first one is the external style sheet. No need to change total web page. Whatever you do want to change, you can write a particular code as an external. That means you can keep your uh, file which is known as 1.css 
and from here you can link to the web page by using the command tag known as the link link rel stand out sheet type text slash css ahrf one dot css so this particular tag will be given there then comes the internal or embedded style sheet the total sheet will be there in between you are going to give internal or embedded uh, wherever you want that means within the web page you are giving that comes under the internal or embedded uh, style sheet if you are giving outside the code then it comes to under the external and if you are giving code in between the in, in front of the line that is or in between the line that is called as the inline style sheet so the style sheet cascading style sheets are broadly classified into three one is external style sheet internal or embedded style sheet and inline style sheet hope you all understood the major concept of the cascading style sheet next we are going to discuss about the program related to the cascading style sheet which explains about the external style sheet internal style sheet or embedded style sheet and inline style style sheet let's see the cascading style sheet program as we discussed previously the cascading style sheet is of three one is external cascading style sheet internal or embedded cascading style sheet and the third one is the inline cascading style sheet so the three different types of cascading style sheets are included in this particular program or this particular html file so here we are going to discuss different tags which helps us to include the cascading style sheet three different types of cascading style sheets let's see the first one is the external cascading style sheet where the external one dot css this is the external cascading style sheet program which is included in one dot html one dot html is the actual html program or html web page where by using an external cascading style sheet we are going to include it in it so for one dot css body body color light blue then h2 text align it is a center color is blue font family it is varanda here we can give any type of the uh, font that is times new roman or any other then font family sans sref color red that means whenever you use the p it should use the sans sref and the color should be red whenever i use h2 the color should be blue and font family should be this one so this is a css one dot css file which i created separately and that we are going to link in the html program so that whenever i use the h2 here i use h2 so this one dot css will affect here here i use p so this p will affect here in the one, uh, one dot html program so here the code which cascading code which you want you give it externally in a separate file and we named it as one dot css and this particular file will be linked to the html one dot html file will be linked to this particular thing so html header link rel style sheet type text slash css ahrf one dot css then comes the style type text slash css hr equal to color blue then p p is from here sorry this is p left margin 20 px body this image style and head that means this is within the head we are giving some code means we are calling the particular text dot uh, one dot css here then this is the inline inline code that means inline css that is h1 style margin and this line is continued with hello dot css hello in css this is the m inline cascading style sheet then comes to the this is h2 h2 is the 
external cascading style sheet and P is the external cascading style sheet. So within the HTML page we are giving the code, we are giving the code, this is the internal cascading style sheet. So in this particular example we are going to use internal cascading style sheet, external cascading style sheet, inline cascading style sheet. So the different three different types of cascading style sheets are used within this program and next step we are going to do the live demo.